A lot more people are looking at hardware wallets now more than ever because custodial services are proving exactly why crypto is needed in the first place. But if you're heavy into Cardano, which brand is the best one to use? Let's talk about it. Welcome to Late Game Crypto. My name is Josh and I'm here helping make smart investments for late game gains. Remember, anything you hear in any of my videos is not to be taken as financial advice. Do your own research and own your own decisions. So the contents of this video was actually originally written to be in my last video on gift ideas for the crypto obsessed. But I found that I had just written so much content on which device was best for Cardano users specifically that it just kind of ended up being a whole separate video. Which is totally cool, because then I get to actually speak to Cardano users who are the entire core audience of this YouTube channel. So, happy whatever gift-giving holiday you celebrate. Now, one of these devices may be better than the other one specifically for Cardano users. But for either of the major hardware wallet brands in this industry, you can hook either of them up to any third-party software wallet, like Nami Wallet, Jira Wallet, or Eternal Wallet. There are easy step-by-step -step features that are built right into the software of the wallet so that you can extend your hardware wallet's second layer of security to any convenient wallet that you might use on your computer or your smartphone. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, the second layer of security is the physical button that you have to press in order to approve any outgoing transactions from a given Cardano wallet. This way, you can still interact with any of your Cardano-based assets conveniently right there on a software program that you already use and it's already built to be enabled to support all of the assets that you might already store in that wallet. This is something that can be done by both Ledger and Trezor devices with the exact same level of security. This is something that both Ledger and Trezor devices can do with the exact same level of security, and this is completely fine for most people. Honestly, for most people, you can just stop watching the video right here. If I could get everybody to use a hardware wallet device, the Cardano ecosystem would be infinitely more secure. So if your intention is to just use a third-party wallet software, it really doesn't matter which way you go. You can pick either one and it's exactly the same thing. But one of the main advantages for having a hardware wallet is that the private seed phrase, which as far as I'm concerned is basically your Web3 social security number and is connected to everything that is owned in that wallet, that private information never touches any internet-connected devices. This is one of those unbreachable security features that adds just so much more protection to your crypto assets. And actually, this is still enabled, this is still true, when you set up a third-party software wallet connected to your hardware wallet device. In the event that you ever need to recover that wallet, there may be a situation where you would actually have to use that private seed phrase on an internet connected device in order to get access to the crypto assets that are stored there. That's not really a common situation at all, and honestly it's probably not even worth bringing up. But if that were ever to happen, that would just about eliminate half the point of using a hardware wallet. That may not necessarily be a devastating compromise of security, but I would consider that device no longer on the same standard of security as a brand new hardware wallet would be. This is totally anecdotal, and maybe it's just me, but I, I have had some trouble recovering a third-party software wallet that is connected to my hardware wallet. And with multiple entities that have had a hand in building the security framework of that particular wallet without necessarily communicating with one another, 
that makes me a little bit uncomfortable. I really don't want to find myself in a position where I can't recover my assets because in a situation where my hardware wallet gets destroyed, I would still be able to recover the contents of the portfolio that is on that hardware wallet. But the assets that I'm trying to recover aren't on that hardware wallet. They're on some other wallet that the access to that wallet has been facilitated by some other third party. Technically, there are supposed to be safeguards and contingencies in place for this type of situation, but we gotta remember that the technology that is developing on Cardano is still developing and it is still new. And don't get me wrong, I will still use a third party app that's connected to my hardware wallet device as only a temporary holding place that has greater security for my Cardano native assets. But all of my long-term assets that I'm holding for the late game, like the next five to 10 years, and I plan on not touching, those are all going directly on the hardware wallet where only I can access it. So, with those potentially irrational fears in mind, which hardware wallet brand, which hardware wallet device is best for Cardano users? It's Ledger. To be completely fair, neither of these options are actually very good for interacting with the Cardano ecosystem. Ledger does have a little bit of leg up on Trezor, but still, neither of these devices on their onboard Cardano functions supports smart contracts, NFTs, or even staking, which honestly, that's like the most basic function in Cardano. Trezor, surprisingly, doesn't support any Cardano native tokens outside of the third party apps that do. Ledger has about a hundred Cardano native tokens that are supported on Ledger Live, including some popular tokens like Meld, World Mobile Token, Society, and Kopi, surprisingly, given that they just migrated from the Binance Smart Chain. However, there are still some top Cardano coins that are not yet supported, like C3 from Charlie3, which is the only Oracle that is building natively on Cardano. LQ from Liquid Labs, which currently, at the time of recording this video, has the highest fully diluted market cap in the entire Cardano ecosystem. I don't think Wi-Fi is supported yet, which has had some of the very earliest decentralized application functionality in the entire Cardano ecosystem. And then there's some other coins that are really important to me that I would really like to store long-term like Jiro and Mutant. Most of the Cardano native tokens that are supported on Ledger Live are ones that I've never heard of before. There are also a few tokens on there that I have heard of before that I was surprised to see and it makes me question the awareness of the Ledger team, or rather the company that Ledger hired, about what's happening in the Cardano ecosystem. So on both fronts, we've got quite a ways to go, but at least on the Ledger side, there is some dedicated attention happening for Cardano, which I appreciate. With that said, I've got some affiliate links down below if you wanna pick up a top of the line security device from Ledger directly, or some protective accessories if you already own one. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any of my Cardano-based content every Tuesday and Thursday. As always, remember never to invest more than what you can afford to lose. Learn as much as you can about this space and play for the late game. Thanks so much for watching.